Mimi Goodman, as we continue with Avi Lewis and Naomi Klein in this part two of our conversation about their new film, This Changes Everything, which is just premiering in the United States in New York at the IFC Center, I asked Naomi Klein to explain the Leap Manifesto. So, in Canada, we're Canadian, um, we um, have been part of a process of, of bringing different social movements together uh, to try to not just talk about what we don't want. You know, we don't want more pipelines. Um, you know, we don't want more fossil fuel infrastructure. We don't want our government to continue to be, uh, you, you know, uh, th this climate criminal on the world stage, which we have been under Stephen Harper for, you know, far too long. But we spend a lot of time, because we have, you know, uh, this, this very extreme uh, uh, government keeping the, the, keeping the Bush dream alive, um, we spend a lot of time saying no. And, and, you know, one of the things that's come out of this project is that we need to have a fully articulated yes, a fully articulated yes of what the next economy look like, looks like, because a lot of what holds us back is just this idea that there is no alternative, that, yeah, you can fight austerity, but then what you'll end up with is even worse. So. You know, we we um, we were really fortunate to be part of this meeting of of 60 movement leaders from labor, indigenous rights, um, climate justice, anti-poverty, migrant rights, uh, in Toronto for two days, and out of that meeting came this document, which we called the Leap Manifesto, um, and uh, what uh, you know what it does is it maps out how we can transition away from fossil fuels very rapidly, in line with, both, with what scientists are telling us we must do and what engineers are telling us we now can do because of these breakthroughs in technology. So getting to 100 percent renewable electricity within two decades, getting to a 100 percent clean economy by mid-century, but doing it in a way that systematically uh, closes inequalities along racial and gender lines, so bringing um, energy democracy, a control over, over resources to indigenous communities first, to frontline communities first. Um, and what's been amazing is the way people have responded to this, both in Canada and around the world, because now there's plans to write a leap manifesto in Australia. We're hearing um, from people all over Europe who want to do the same. There's even some interest in the U.S. Um, and, uh, you know, it's the political parties in Canada are having to respond to it. Some are running towards it, like the Green Party, saying this is, you know, our platform has much in common with it. Some are running away from it, um, like the, 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 the NDP does, is afraid of being associated with this radical document. But yet, um, you know, tens of thousands of Canadians have signed it, including people like Leonard Cohen and Alan Page. And um, it's just what we wanted was to put this, you know, on the agenda, in the election, and force a discussion. And it's happened. What about the October 19th elections that will be taking place in Canada, the significance of these elections? Oh, Avi is way better at talking about electoral <laughs> politics than well, me. I, I mean, <laughs> it's an unprecedented election in that we have three major political parties in Canada, and uh, a lot of Americans understand that the fact that we have a third party which traditionally was more to the left, is the reason that we have universal health care and a lot of our other progressive social programs. Of course, in Canada, since the 1980s, those programs have been under attack. Um, and we've experienced a, a, a dramatic shift to the right the way uh, just about everywhere in the world has. Um, but we do have three political parties. And in this election, uh, after three major, three major parties, and, and in this election, after a decade of extreme right rule from the Harper government, we've had this amazing horse race where all three parties have basically been tied. Now, in the, in, in the last few weeks of the campaign, it looks like the New Democratic Party, the left uh, most of the three parties, is starting to fall behind. But there's an overwhelming number of Canadians who want to change course from the Harper years. And interestingly, the reason why that, that left party is, seems to be dropping behind is because they moved to the center and they're being, um, you know, outflanked by the liberals who have moved to the left. And a lot of the polling in Canada is showing uh, that people want, don't want just gradual incremental change. They're ready for uh, more dramatic change. And this is why we're seeing more support for the Leap Manifesto. But, you know, look, uh, Stephen Harper is an incredibly unpopular prime minister, and 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 because of that, there are, there are a lot of people who are going to be voting strategically for whoever they believe has the best chance of beating Harper, because there's a lot of concern about splitting the vote. And that's the other thing that we're doing with the Leap Manifesto. If people are voting um, for a party that doesn't reflect their full aspirations, particularly on climate change, because not one of these three major parties has made climate change an election issue, the the, the Leap Manifesto gives them 
them an opportunity to say, okay, this is where I'm casting my ballot, but this is what I actually believe in. Um, and uh, our hope is that uh, we'll end up uh, with a government that is not the Harper government. Um, maybe it will be a coalition government, and we'll be looking for, okay, what mix of policy platforms from the Liberals, the NDP, and the Greens uh, are, are we going to embrace and, 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 and make our platform, and that the Leap Manifesto can really have an influence on that process. Um, can you talk about what just happened in the Arctic? I think, to many people, shock. You mm -hmm. had the kayaktivists, the environmentalists converging <clears throat> along all through the Northwest to try to stop Shell from drilling. You have President Obama, the first sitting president of the United States, to go to the Arctic, some, giving some of the best climate change speeches ever. And yet, right before he went, he approved drilling in the Arctic. And then Shell announces they won't be doing it, though he had given them permission. Yeah, and they, though they had spent, I think, seven billion dollars on this adventure uh, over the years, uh, you know, it's remarkable. And one of the things that I think one has to understand is that the fossil fuel industry will go to great lengths not to credit activism uh, um, as being a contributor to a decision like this. Well, because think, think what they could encourage. They if don't they did. Want to encourage us. <laughs> yes. Um, but but I believe that this is uh, a victory that that absolutely should be claimed by this remarkable movement. Author Naomi Klein and filmmaker Avi Lewis on their new documentary This Changes Everything. The film is now playing in New York at the IFC Center. You can visit their website thischangeseverything.org for upcoming screenings and to learn how to host a screening in your community.